Wetlands are super important. Uh, College Board is obsessed with wetlands. By the way, every environmentalist is obsessed with wetlands. You might remember a little bit of this from the biome tour. Uh, wetlands are super important ecologically. They have a lot of practical benefits to humans. And sadly, we're almost out of them. Uh, we used them up early. Um, so this is maybe the highest priority for habitat conservation worldwide. Uh, remember from the biomes tour that um, wetlands are any land area that occasionally gets covered with water. Um, and so these can be cold, they can be hot, they can be forested, um, but they're super important and the College Board will need you to know this. So I have a bunch of notes for you on this. Um, wetlands help us recharge groundwater because they're wet. That's a place where water can go back into the ground. Um, that's really important to human water supply. <clears throat> uh, number two, there's this thing called the nursery effect. The idea that all of that water with sunlight and nutrients is really productive. And because wetlands are super productive, they're a really important habitat for wildlife, especially a place to grow little stuff. There's a lot of cover. So this is a place where shellfish and fish come to breed, like halibut will come up onto freshwater wetlands to lay their babies so that to lay their eggs so that those little babies can feed in a nutrient rich environment with a lot of cover before they go out to the ocean. You can also imagine that's really important for other aquatic animals since there's a lot of productivity and food and shelter there. Um, birds really value wetlands because it's like a good pit stop on a migration. There's a bunch of food and water. And of course, mammals need a place to eat um, and drink. So um, it turns out that all sorts of global populations of wildlife come to wetlands at some point. It's like a hub, a place where everybody meets and overlaps. Um, <clears throat> Also, wetlands improve water quality. Because of all that vegetation, they can mechanically trap litter. They slow stuff down. And then there's all these decomposers. Think about it. Wetlands are a place where runoff always goes. So there's a bunch of species there that are evolved to decompose things, right? Like if you're a decomposer, you want to be in a wetland. So if somebody adds like a dog turd into the creek, the first environment that's really equipped to break down that dog turd is a wetland. They decompose organic material into nutrients and then all those nutrients that are rich in that water get absorbed and made into biomass. So you could think of it as like a food disposal in the sense that things get smaller. And then you can also think of it as like a recycling facility where new things are made. <clears throat> um, coastal wetlands can also prevent storm surges. I wish I had more time, but we're rushing this year. So take my word for it. Mangrove swamps, sandbars, uh, cypress swamps, um, in areas that have a lot of coastal storm surges, um, having wetlands on the coast can slow down that hit of water so you get less flooding and impact. This is a big deal in Louisiana, in the tropics, Indonesia in particular, which had a huge tsunami that was really devastating. You might have seen a movie called The Impossible, which talks about a huge tsunami in Indonesia. Um, that's a true story about a tsunami that hit a coastline. And most of the coastline um, for natives had coastal wetlands that protected them. But in this one tourist capital, those mangroves were removed so all the tourists could see the sunset and walk out to the sand. And because of that, it worked like a funnel to take the entire tsunami and focus that tidal wave right into that one tourist community, which got devastated. 
you should look it up. I think it's called Phuket. I don't know how to spell that. Phuket. I don't know. I'm such a racist. I'm sorry. I wish I knew better. Indonesia uh, tsunami. It happened at the turn of the millennium, I think, sometime early 2000s, late 90s. Um, uh, big deal for Louisiana, by the way. Hurricane Katrina, all about coastal wetlands, removed for shipping up the Mississippi, allowed uh, Hurricane Katrina to really flood um, New Orleans. Um, okay, wetlands are one of the world's largest carbon sinks because so much stuff is growing there. CO2 dissolves into water and gets made into biomass. And there's this thing that wetlands do, it's called the sponge effect, which means that wetlands absorb water like a sponge that's left in the drain of your sink. And then once they're full of water, that water trickles out slowly like a sponge in the bottom of your sink. So instead of all the water draining out at once, it slows the flow of water, and when the water is gone, it continues to dribble out a little bit, like a sponge in the drain of your sink. So this, of course, improves groundwater recharge, prevents flooding, and gives you a more moderate water flow downhill of wetlands, because the wetland itself will slow the water to prevent the flooding, and then we'll let the water trickle out to have a more extended runoff. Instead of a storm surge, you get a trickle for a long time. It's called the sponge effect. <clears throat> There's all these reasons why we wish we had kept our wetlands, but we didn't. We've basically removed all of them. You can see San Francisco Bay used to have a bunch, and there's only a few left. That's the blue. Uh, we've lost about half of them nationwide. Some states have lost as much as 90%. And globally, in some places, that's even worse. We tend to level them for cities and farming. Uh, in some places, we divert the water so it doesn't end up in a wetland anymore. You know, if you dam the river and you use that in a city, you've dried out a wetland. So on average, uh, we've reduced the water reaching wetlands by about 50% nationwide. And then we also ruin them with runoff. Um, pesticide um, has a huge impact um, on wetlands because of the insects that are so important in wetlands. Um, and of course, all those extra nutrients, the fertilizer runoff, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium can overwhelm wetlands. Uh, mining has a lot of impact on wetlands because of sediment and the changes in pH. We'll talk about that later in this unit. Um, logging can have a big impact on wetlands because of the sediment, you know, clear cuts leave all the dirt naked. Um, and of course, cities, you know, all that oil and litter. Um, you know, wetlands could help us. They, they fix runoff to protect the ocean. But in many places, we've lost them. So now we're making the ocean worse because we made the wetlands go away. And so wetlands should be protected. They should be restored. Santa Barbara is a world leader in wetland restoration. You have famous projects all over Santa Barbara. I used to do a field trip, but we don't do that because it's COVID. <clears throat> and I should add a new vocab term. I should have underlined that. I apologize at the bottom of the screen. Bioswales are artificial man-made creeks. They function like a wetland in that they slow, moderate, bioremediate. Um, but these are artificial man-made creeks. They're called bioswales. It's a way to clean our runoff. And again, that's something else that I used to show you on that field trip that we don't get to do anymore. Um, okay, that's it for wetlands. I talked really fast. <laughs>